business people paying, you know. And so far I did well and none of them has been complaining and they sent postcard, even that one. I was coughing one winter and because this is already four years, you know. And I was coughing and he said, Oh you can't come. Then he comes three days after with herbs that he picked in the field and he had dried and he said I can't remember if it's so. Uh, and then he explained for my hips before I had to the place that I should have trail and he picks, you know, um, leaves and brings them. So I guess if they were hateful somehow, they wouldn't, they wouldn't relate like this. We, I didn't feel I stole them, you know. I felt that in a way we made money out of what they did with us. But we didn't make money like... No, we made the money that pays films and goes on. And sometimes to feel, that's why I made a second film, two years after, really to pay them a tribute as not existing just the time of a documentary. We feel always a problem, you know, like we, we pick them like a butterfly in a wall, and then we go. So by coming back to them two years after, it's not like saying we just stole your life. They exist before and after. So by making a film two years after, we pay tribute to the fact that they exist after, and we have to respect them, not just as a character in the documentary, and specifically interesting. So all these questions are question of filmmakers, filmmakers dealing with reality, and reality is so difficult for other people. Have you decided what you're going to do a documentary on, and um, at what point do you try to then distribute it to but like that one, when I start to look at the market and want to do that, I wrote one or two pages and try, I let's say I tried Arte, I tried Pasteur, nobody wanted it. So at that point, then, then we took the risk of producing the film and then we sold it quite okay. But I needed money from one television because we have to start with television. It's something very like... And they had said no at Canal Plus. And the ladies doing documentaries at Canal Plus were very gifted to say, we don't dare to propose it to the chef, qui s'appelait Alain de Clef. He will never accept the subject like this. Go yourself as a world. This is your job to, to make him take documentaries. He said, no, go yourself. So I make an appointment, and I have an appointment three weeks later. Meanwhile, we had been so lucky to find this hard shaped potato. I said, I got it. So I go to the appointment three weeks later. He knows me, Mama, there, you know. And I come with the potato like this in my hand. And I say, okay, I'll have a hello. That potato and me, we, we have to make a film together. <laughs> and he laughed and said, what is that story of I, I explained, and he said, oh, it's a wonderful subject. And he said to the ladies of the documentary department, you have to take the film. So sometimes you have to make a fool of yourself just to make it go. I was, I was totally right to come with the potato because it made it a click something. So then, can I please give money? And then later, later on, Arte, who had said no, they came back. They paid, you know, it's always. The film I recently made in Munich, the minute I had the idea, I start to investigate, asking channels to find the money. So we find out the money, then it goes like this. Well, money is always a problem, always, even after so many years of filming. Nobody say, would we like to do something is money. No, never. Never I was offered to do whatever I want. Never. Ever. I had to bring a subject and fight to get the money. Every single film since I started exactly 50 years ago, because in July it would be the first, to the money band, what is the word? The first shot of the first day of my first film mm -hmm. was in July. Huh? The first anniversary of your first. And my first day of shooting is in July 54, so this is soon, 50 years. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to be applauded, it's just to say that it should give you courage and energy, because I still believe that it's a wonderful world artistic job, I would say both, you know. It's a beautiful way to express things and share and 
by going documentary and sometimes fiction, going from one to another, I don't put myself in a position of the incredible artist who has, you know, his soul and his spirit to express. Because when you do a documentary, you have to be modest because the, you have to serve the subject. You have to to do your best to to bring out and bring to the light things that people don't see, people that you see better than they see, maybe. But you still you still are the servant of your subject. And then by introducing myself, I'm saying I exist, I exist. But officially, officially, you just serve the subject. Now the thing I do, and I, I hope I do it well, is to make any documentary, including in serious subject, I believe that people pay to go to see movies. And I said it in the morning. And they should get something for the money. And they should get some entertainment. And so I keep the idea that they should not, never be bored. And if I have an opinion, a position, a, pos a possibility, to have a nice piece. Like I remember these children that, I remember that song about la di de pata de ma di de pata. They knew the song. I made them sing it. I love that scene because they sing it like children would love to sing, you know. And this is a famous song, and, and Sunday Potatoes again, you know. And <laughs> this is a song of poor people, but it comes out very nice. Now I was outside. You laughed at some point. I wonder what, when was it? Not for the potatoes. I, I heard a laugh, like after half an hour more or less. Like a big laugh, I was there writing something. I was wondering what made you laugh. Oh, the guy with the boots talking about the boots. Excuse me? The guy who had the rubber boots. The boots? Yeah, he, he said all the people should die in their apartment safe. Yeah. Also, a couple. That's a couple. And he felt like the Lord of the town. He felt like what? The Lord of the town. Yes, that's incredible. And he, play, he plays like a gambler. Je ramasse la mise, he said. It's incredible. <laughs> incredible. He was invited one day on a TV show. When they advertise a film, they ask somebody to come and say, okay, pay him, pay him to come. I always say, pay him the trip, pay him money. So they do it. And he said something, and the lady was asking, you're never sick, you find good things. He said, oh yes, I found foie gras, very good foie gras. And he started to say what he found in the gap. <coughs> like good food, you know, very good food, he said. And I choose, like the other one, he tastes only good bread, you know. Sehel bread, seven sehel bread, he wouldn't take. I mean, they become, very refined in their way of thinking. And I found that very interesting, very nice, that they don't make it with, they make it with class in a way, you know.